What's going on guys? Welcome back. And in this video, we're gonna be talking a little bit about dictionaries. So in the last video, we kind of talked about arrays. Uh, dictionaries are actually pretty similar to arrays in a lot of ways, but they have very different use cases and uh, there's a lot of different reasons to use them. Um, we'll talk about a couple little simple use cases in this video, but as we move through the course, there'll definitely be a lot of situations where we use dictionaries and you'll definitely start to get a good grasp of like what we're gonna do with them. So let's go ahead and start by opening up one of these playgrounds again. Uh, let's make it a blank one and let's call it dictionary. Am I spelling that right? Yep, dictionary coolness. My names are just crazy lame. Okay, so anyways, uh, let's go ahead and start here. So let's go ahead and start by just getting into it and creating a dictionary called states. And let's set that equal to, let's put these brackets kind of like we did with the array. But in this case, let's go ahead and indent these down to make it a little bit easier to read. And let's put in a couple things. So just follow along with me here and then we'll explain what's going on afterwards. Let's go ahead and put in the, like the identifier of a state. So in this case, I'm gonna put Texas. Uh, and then we'll put the actual name of the state next to it, All right? And let's do this a couple times. Let's put a let's put a few states in here, five or six different states. Let's put NV for Nevada, woo, Nevada, and then we'll. Man, I just cannot type right now. Nev oh Jesus. Okay, we got Nevada. Now we're gonna put uh, California. Let's say. Uh, maybe New York, just a couple more. Uh, let's do Florida. And let's do Washington. Sorry if I missed your state, by the way. If you wanna put your own state in, feel free. You can add as many as you like to this if you want, or make it whatever you want. Maybe make it countries or any, you could do anything you want. Uh, okay, so cool, you got states. So let's break down what's going on here, what this is. So instead of an array, an array, if you remember, is accessed, you access each element by an index, which is like a number or an integer. So if we wanted to get the first item in an array, we'd put zero. So we'd put like states bracket zero. You'll remember that from the last video. Or if you want the third element, you'd have to put two, as, but remember it because it starts from zero. So anyways, with a dictionary, you kind of get to define what it is that you're going to reference that item by. So in the case of states, if we wanted to get Texas, instead of passing in an integer, we would pass in the string of TX. So let's kind of display that down here. So if I put states, I put my brackets, and instead of a number, I put TX like that, and we run that, I'm going to get Texas over here. So pretty cool. Uh, we could do a couple of these, and you could just see that uh, it's true. So if we put CA, we're gonna get California, so on and so forth. We could go, we could just keep going through it. So um, dictionaries also have a lot of similar properties to arrays. For example, we've got access to the states.count. Uh, the dot count is obviously just the length of it. And this would be an integer though. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six items. And if we print that, we're gonna get six. So that's pretty cool. So we've got access to that. And much like, um, much like arrays, we can also loop through the items in a dictionary. So let's kind of see what that looks like. Um, so we're gonna do the same kind of thing where we said for item in array, but instead with a dictionary, there's two things that we need access to. Not only do we want access to the actual item, but we also want access to the key. This is called the key of the item. So we've got the key right here and we've got the value right here. So we want access to both of those things inside the loop. So to do that, let's put a couple of parentheses like that and we'll put key value in states. Okay, cool. So what's going on here? Um, so key and value, much like the last example with the for loop in the arrays, these can be whatever you want them to be. I chose to name it key and value because that makes a lot of sense to me. This is key and this is value. But if maybe it made more sense for you in whatever application you're working on, maybe we could put state identifier and state name. Maybe something like that would work. Again, you can make these whatever you want. Swift is just going to give you access to the key with whatever name you decide to put here. And it's gonna give you access to the value with whatever name you put here. 
So now let's go ahead and just print the state identifier and let's print the state name. So go ahead and pause for a minute and just think to yourself, what do you think is going to happen with this loop? So maybe you've run it already or maybe you're waiting for me to do it. What's gonna happen is like we would expect with the last uh, like array loop, this is not a lot different. It's going to go through and it's gonna print TX Texas and then it's gonna go to the next one, NV Nevada, and then it's gonna to go to the next one, CA California, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and run that. And kind of like I said, we got TX Texas, FL Florida, NV Nevada, WA Washington, CA California, NY New York. So that's pretty cool. Um, that is the basic concept of dictionaries. Uh, I hope that kind of makes sense. I don't want to dwell on this one too much. We're going to have a lot of examples where we just get to use these and have some hands-on experience with them. But that's the basics. This is how you create a dictionary. That's kind of this, like in this case, real quick before we move on, um, this might be an example of a good application where like you wanted to have the user type in the name of their state code, which would be like TX or NV or CA or whatever. And then you could display to them on the next page, like the full name of the state. So anyways, this is how you'd create it. That's a pretty decent use case for a dictionary possibly. Um, this is how we reference an item in the dictionary. Here's a property of the dictionary that we can get access to, which is count. And then this is how we would loop through each item in the dictionary. So that kind of wraps up this dictionary video. Uh, see you in the next one.